Good evening. Welcome to our gathering for this on the first day of November, November 1. Uh, the evening time of fellowship together, but also um, spending time in meditating on God's Word. So welcome this evening. As Peter writes, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus, of God and of Jesus Christ. And that's, uh, that's the blessing and the greeting that we receive tonight. And we'll find, uh, as we finish up Second Peter, we'll find again um, Peter talking about the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ together. So welcome tonight. We're looking at the last few verses of Second uh, Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 11 and then going through 18. And um, yeah, again, just a, a wonderful summary of what Peter calls us to as Christians and called the, the churches, the people to, as he was writing this letter, a beautiful description of what Peter calls us to, to do as we, uh, as we await the coming of Jesus Christ. So as we, uh, before we read this text, let's take a moment to uh, ask God's blessing upon it. Holy Spirit, we pray that as we read this text and meditate it upon meditate upon it tonight, we pray that you would that you would um, open our eyes that we would see, open our hearts that we would uh, understand and we would plant your word deep. May we have ears to hear. God, um, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the the opportunity and the chance to meditate upon it tonight. Uh, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace in Jesus Christ. And uh, we pray that you would, um, yeah, that you would help us see and hear and know um, the words about Jesus Christ that are beneficial for us. And that out of that, as we, as we seek to know you uh, accurately, um, that we would respond appropriately. Father, we pray this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. So 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 11 through 18. And this is what Peter writes. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and goodness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolve, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are awaiting for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found in him without spot or blemish and at peace. And count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him, as he does all as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unable twist to their own destruction, as they do with other scriptures. You, therefore... Beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with error of lawless people and lose your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him, to him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. So last time we talked about this coming day of the Lord, the day of judgment, the day that Jesus would come back to, to judge between the living and the dead, as the Apostle Creed says. And here Peter is laying out for us then, if we're waiting for that day, and he ta we talked about that last time, if, he says, since all of these things are to be dissolved since the heavens will be dissolved the 
uh, the heavens will pass away, the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. So since there's this, um, we might call it the refiner's fire, since there's uh, going to be, everything is going to be tested with the fire of judgment of God to see what is holy and righteous and what is not. The, the things that are not holy and righteous will be burned up and the only the things that can stand in the presence of God will be, they will be refined into things that can stand in the presence of God. And, and since all of those things are happening, and since we're waiting for that, and we're moving on towards the returning of Jesus Christ in our time, right? Since we're sort of moving forward in time and in days and in months and in years, and since we're we're waiting for that, Peter says, this is how you should live. Peter lays out a life of following Jesus Christ. As we wait for his second coming, as we wait for his coming, he lays out this life of following Jesus Christ. And he really asks, he really asks, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? That's the question. What lives ought you to live as you wait for Jesus to come back? And, and he says, and he says this in, in verse 13. He says, but but according to his promise, we're waiting for this new heavens and new earth. By God's promise, we're waiting for a new heavens and a new earth where, where, where righteousness will live. If you remember the song, It is well with my soul. O Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Right? We're waiting for that day when our faith shall be sight. When all of the works of our faith would be revealed. And all of the things which we have done for Jesus Christ will be revealed. And we will praise Jesus Christ. So, Peter says, what kind of life should you live? So, he says, in your waiting, in your waiting, you should live, live this way, right? In verse 14. Since you are waiting for these, since you're waiting for Jesus to come, he says, be diligent to be found in him without spot or blemish and at peace. That's the life we live. Our life of holiness and godliness. Be diligent so it's not just this active or this passive sitting back in our chairs waiting for waiting for Jesus and God to do all of these things to us and wait for our sanctification our being made into Jesus likeness to happen to us No Peter says Peter says you have to work at it be diligent be diligent. Be active in your life following Jesus Christ. Be active, actively following Jesus Christ. Actively reading the scriptures about Jesus Christ. Actively showing people that your life is grounded in Jesus Christ. Actively telling people about Jesus Christ. Actively showing how your life is a life following the patterns of godliness and of grace and so be diligent, be diligent. And he says, then be diligent, be working on being spotless, right? Be diligent to be found by him, by Christ, without spot or blemish, to be spotless and to be, to be faultless, right? A blemish is a fault, Sometimes you can buy things from factories that are that it's less value because it's a blemished object or it's a irregular. It's not. It doesn't fit the patterns or it doesn't fit the 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 quality standard. Some some factories won't even you know they have a quality 
uh, person there that they will destroy what's not up to their standards, right? So Paul says, be, be without blemish, be faultless, be spotless. You know, spot is, it, it refers to having a stain, right? If we have a stain on our clothes, that stain is, uh, is seen by, by whoever. If you, if you eat some uh, spaghetti sauce or whatever and some salsa and you get it on your clothes, people see that, right? He says, be spotless, be faultless, and be at peace. Be diligent to be found at peace. Now, how do we do that? How do we, how do we keep ourselves spotless? How do we, how do we be, find ourselves faultless or at peace, right? Well, it comes because of Jesus Christ. So in other words, Peter is saying, be spotless in Christ. Be faultless in Christ. Be at peace with Christ. Right? That's the way, that's the way we can be ready to face Jesus when he comes back, is to be found in him. To find to, that that our righteousness is not something that we've earned, but it's something that's given us from Jesus Christ. So but but what Peter is saying is you, we have to work at it. We can't just sit back and say, oh, well, God will do that. In his time, God will do that. No, we have to work at it. Be diligent. And, and, then, and then Peter says, he says in verse 15, And count the patience of our Lord as salvation. Understand that, that between the ascension and, and Jesus say, I'm, behold, I'm coming soon. And his, his second coming, which hasn't come yet, that time is, is God's patience. We talked about it last time. But, but Peter says, and count the patience of our Lord as salvation. God's patience and his waiting is to be considered salvation. Why? Well, we are given more time to share, more time to live the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're given more time. It's not time for you to be impatient about wanting that, longing for, for Jesus to come back. It's, it's not more time for you to spend with family though that's a benefit but it's that's not what it's for i i used to remember before uh, i don't know i was i don't know how old i was i i heard a sermon about about praying for jesus praying that jesus that that jesus would come back and i kept thinking to myself but but I want to experience things. I want to experience what it is to, to have this and to do this and to be married and have children. And so Jesus come back, but not before that, right? Not before I experience. What a selfish way to think of it. God's patience is about salvation. It's, it's about our living actively, diligently, being found in Jesus, being spotless and faultless in Jesus and at peace with Jesus. It's, it's time for us to live that gospel life so that others would see and know Jesus Christ. It's, it's time for us to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, that there's an urgent message, there's an urgency to sharing the gospel. And I think so often we, we don't have that urgency. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it next week or we'll do it sometime in the future. Uh, those people, you know, there's an urgency, right? And the time that we have now between Jesus' ascension and his yet to be coming, his second coming yet to be, is 
Peter says is salvation. It's time for you to, to, to go and do and live the gospel. That's salvation. You know, the, I think it's uh, Psalm uh, 127. Uh, I think that's what it is. Where it says, um, I'm, I'm going here on a whim. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. Maybe not. No. Nope. Psalm 127 is, is, unless the Lord builds a house. Um, maybe Psalm 118. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That that phrase there is is the a phrase that says that says um today is the day of salvation today is the day of salvation and and uh we are to be glad and rejoice in that day and, and so so every day is a day of salvation is every day given to us is a day that we are to proclaim and live the gospel so that others would see the good news about Jesus. And so Peter says, work, be diligent at being found spotless, without blemish, faultless, and at peace in Jesus. Count the Lord's patience as salvation. And then Peter points to Paul. Paul, we assume, as he was writing letters to the churches and those letters were passed around, we're, we're assuming that the letters of Paul were known to, to the people to which Peter were, was writing. And so, as they were passed around from one church to another, Peter, Paul, Paul in his teaching had the same trajectory and the same teaching as Peter. And what was that? That, that was... Christ, right? Christ would return to judge, and the waiting time Christian in the waiting time Christians should point to Jesus and live the gospel life. And, and so Paul was too writing these things. Like the main point of the scriptures is Jesus. The main point of a Christian life is Jesus, right? Spotless in Jesus, faultless in Jesus, at peace with Jesus. And then Peter goes on and he, and he says, some of the things, even though Paul wrote doctrine and some of the things which Paul writes was hard, right? Some of the things in them are hard to understand, right? Even though Paul writes doctrine and at times things which are hard to understand, the main message is the same and that's Jesus Christ. It's the main message. And then he says, you know, so so you know that some of what Paul's writing is hard to understand. And, and, and he says, knowing this beforehand, uh, knowing that Paul's message is the central message of Jesus Christ, and there's some things that are hard to understand, don't, don't be skewed or don't be... Uh, don't be distracted by those who are taking something small in Paul's writings and saying, well, it has to be this way and, and trying to distract you away from Jesus Christ. He said, don't get carried away or confused by those who want to distort the message that Paul is bringing. Don't be carried away by the false teachers who point away from Jesus. Because Peter is saying, Paul is pointing you towards Jesus, the same place where I'm pointing you. Don't be pointed away, be pointed to Jesus. And Peter ends with this wonderful description of, of what a Christian life is. In verse 18, Peter says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, we're a farming community here. I grew up in a farming community. Peter says, grow. Now, again, it's not, this isn't a, a passive thing. Uh, although being transplanted, it's, they, it, God in Psalm 1 says, uh, says the one who, 
meditates on God's law and it knows God is is a tree planted by streams of water. Well, that's actually the verb, the Hebrew verb to be transplanted. So, so we we understand that we have to be planted by God in Jesus Christ. But but then Peter says, grow. Right, root yourself. Put deep roots down. Root yourself. Find your nourishment, find your water, find the food that you need for your soul in Jesus Christ. Be rooted in Jesus Christ. Grow. Do it. Foster your relationship with Jesus Christ. Foster your relationship by reading the Word. Foster your relationship by, by... by hanging on every word of Jesus. So grow. Grow in grace. The undeserved favor of God. We just went through the Reformation. Of, uh, just remember, I, uh, remember the Reformation yesterday on Reformation Day. Grace, unmerited favor of God. By grace alone, through faith alone, right? God's unmerited favor upon you is grace. Grow in grace, understanding that God, what God in Christ has done for you. Grow in grace and grow in knowledge. Grow in this deep relationship with Jesus Christ. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remember how we started? Peter starts his letter, May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. And he ends with grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And then he gives this wonderful doxology. Doxology means, or doxos is is uh, praise uh, in Greek. Doxos is praise, and so there's this doxology, a praise to Jesus, to Him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity, Amen. In other words, may may God be seen, may Jesus Christ be seen, may He receive the glory that is due him out of our lives now until the day when he comes right now in that waiting time may god may jesus christ be glorified may jesus christ be praised what a wonderful way to end a letter that peter says to know jesus christ to grow in the grace grow in our understanding of what Christ has done for us by giving his life, by shedding his blood, by by going to the grave, suffering immensely so that we would not suffer the effects of our sin. Yes, we die, but but if we die in Jesus, we'd we won't die. Yet shall he live, Jesus says. And so we come to this end and we pray that God will be glorified in us and God would be glorified in our lives. And as he says, amen, may it be so. The meaning of the word, amen. So as we finish out Second Peter, I pray that uh, you have been blessed by that, that, that as we come to the conclusion of that letter, um, that spending time there was uh, was a blessing to you as we g- finish up this evening i wanted to um i wanted to do something that i should have done this morning and um and i i my my i forgot um one of the prayer requests that came out this week was for dan apama and so um, I forgot to mention that this morning and pray for him. And I, um, I will catch up with those who, 
who I need to and apologize, but um, just to give a, a, a brief little update, Dan Epema uh, is still in the hospital. He's being monitored. There's some, there's some things going on, um, but he didn't suffer a stroke, even though there are some stroke-like um, symptoms. Uh, he's confused, and so they're going to do more tests to see once what's going on. And, um, and so um, we'll pray for Dan tonight, specifically that God would give wisdom and that God would um, help, help those who need to know, understand, and help Dan. Uh, we'll pray for... Uh, towards that and um, and then again we'll pray through some things that are going on and in, in our lives and the church and then um, yeah we'll spend some time praying for our country too and and um, and the wisdom that we as Christians need to uh, to vote and and the the sound the solid foundation we have uh, to stand upon in Jesus Christ. So let's, uh, let's go to God in a time of prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this day, a day set aside to worship and to praise you. We thank you for giving us this opportunity. Lord, we, we give you praise that Peter was able to write those letters to uh, your people and, and that we in this year of 2020, we're able to read them and we're able to take the same, uh, the, to hear the same message, take the same comfort that, that our lives in Jesus Christ is of deep importance. And as we wait, even, even as we're, we're so far removed from the time of Peter till now that, that your patience has, has has been proved and that is a time of salvation for there are people hearing the gospel and coming to know you and growing in grace and in knowledge of Jesus Christ and and so God we are too are stirred to to grow and to to live the gospel to realize that in living that way and pointing to Jesus with our words and with our lives that that we are witnessing to the goodness of Jesus Christ and that people see that and they, and they search that. God, we thank you for that opportunity. Father, we thank you for your church, for the people who gather, for the people who love, for the people who are a community together. Lord, we pray that your church would have a witness here in Raymond, that this church, that this community, this family together, as we seek to love you and to love our neighbors, that we would proclaim the goodness of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your church and for the ways that we have to, to love one another. We think of uh, Dan Epema as he is suffering from some confusion and and he's had some some accidents and and Lord we don't know and and the doctors don't know all that is going on and and it and it's frustrating and brings anxiety for Marion and for those who love Dan Lord we lift him up to you as a as a church and we pray that you would show the way forward that you would direct doctors and nurses to do the right tests and that the tests would become would become conclusive in that they would show what's going on and how to help. But Lord, in the meantime, if there's anxiety, draw us close to you. If there's confusion, Lord, give peace. Bring healing to Dan. Help him to rest. Help him, help him to, to feel your presence and that he would experience your grace and mercy. Lord, we lift him up to you and we pray that someday we would bring praises of, to you for, for answered prayer as we await and we seek you in this situation. Lord, we're grateful for the opportunity to, to come alongside Mac and, and his family 
in this week, Lord, as they as they um, have services and have times to remember Bev and and as they meditate upon the gift that she was to them, Lord, we pray that that you would pour out your mercy and grace upon them, that you would comfort those who mourn. And as a church, Lord, as we too recognize the gift that she was to us and and, and the, the joyful tone that she had speaking about Jesus Christ in her life and 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 the devotion to one another that Mac and Bev had together, Lord, what a testimony to your goodness and to your grace. And so, Lord, for those who mourn, we pray that you would comfort and that you would give peace. We pray for the Slochter family, too, as, as they mourn the passing of Corwin. Lord, Lord, we pray that you would be with Corwin and or his uh, wife and, and family. Lord, that you would watch over them and give them the peace that they need. Lord, we thank you for, for those who are a part of our church, for those who are connected to our church, that, that their families are grown. We think of uh, the Beekmans and, and giving thanks for Tegan and for the uh, Wayne and Kayla Froggett, as they give thanks for Ray Lynn, Lord, we pray too that, that you would watch over these little ones as they grow. Lord God, we pray uh, as citizens of the heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ, who has opened the door and no one can shut it to those who are in Jesus Christ. But as citizens of that kingdom, we also recognize our citizenship here in this country and in this state and in, this, in our counties and cities. Lord, we pray for, we pray for, for the ability to, to proclaim the gospel by our votes, for the ability to participate in government, for their part, for the ability to participate in the discussion that's going around in society. Lord, some people want to shut out the Christian voice. Some people want to do away with with religion for they they see it as something that is foolishness but we know that that what is foolish to the world is salvation for us in Jesus Christ and so God give us a voice give us a witness as we go to the the polls and maybe some of us have already voted but for those of you of of, of us who are voting lord we pray that that you would guide and lead and direct that you would help us to, in good conscience, uh, vote for the candidate that that we uh, that we feel would be best for this kingdom. Would help this kingdom to grow and to know you eventually. Lord God, we pray and we thank you for uh, for this kingdom for. President Trump and Vice President Pence, and we thank you for uh, the freedoms that we have and for our senators and congressmen and, and, and all those whom, by your sovereign will, you have brought into authority over us. Lord, we thank you for them. Forgive us, Lord, when we, when we wrongly disparage them with our words, when we wrongly, um, in pride, uh, seek to go our own way and Lord, we pray that you would give us that you would give us humility and patience and peace. Lord, we pray for um, the divide that seems to be in so many families and so many communities in this nation. Lord, we pray, we pray for peace. And yes, Lord, we pray, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But in the meantime, Lord, help us to live lives pointing to the gospel, pointing to Jesus. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for uh, the opportunities that ha we have to worship, not only with word and in deed, but also by giving what you, from what you've given to us as we were able to do this morning. And Lord God, what a blessing it is. May you receive that as worship of you. Now, God, as we go into this week, we pray for your continued blessings and your grace and your leading. 
Father God, protect those who need protection from the virus that's going around in our country and in this world. Be with those who are still continuing to battle it in the medical field. Lord God, bring healing to those who need healing. Bring encouragement to those who need encouragement. And raise us up, Lord, to come alongside them as a church. Father, to God, to Jesus Christ be the glory. Uh, Father, we pray it in his name. Amen. Well, grace and peace to you. May you grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And as you go forward into this week, blessings.